Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Y'all down! Now for those of y'all that's new to my page, in 1994 I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life. I served 24 years straight in the California prison system during those times. I accumulated some good stories. I'm going to share one with y'all today. If you like the story, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you'll be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Also, man, if you want to check out some good prison content, I'm telling you, man, go to my YouTube playlist. Scroll down, you'll see I have my stories organized in the different topics and categories, and I guarantee you're going to find something that you like, man. Let's hop right up into this story. Now, this story happened today, right? Maybe about three hours ago. And it's crazy because we never really know what a day is going to bring, right? So, um, periodically, I'll take my granddaughter to school. And so today, I jump up maybe about 6.45 in the morning. So I can take her to school. She's six years old, right? So I go over there to her house. It's maybe about 10 minutes from where I stay. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn it. It's not back, y'all. It's not back. But being outside in that cold, sometimes I jog late at night. And uh, I think that's that's also irritating. But anyway, so I go up there. You know, I go to get her. Um, while she's getting ready to get dressed, you know, she got a little puppy. So I, I take her puppy outside. Take her puppy outside, walk him real fast, and then uh take him back, take him back upstairs. When I'm when I'm taking the puppy upstairs, she's coming downstairs, you know, so she's ready. So uh I take the puppy upstairs real quick, you know, take the leash off him, put him in the cage or whatever. Uh get her, we head back downstairs, now we walk into my car. <clears throat> so as we're walking to the car to get in the car, like I said, she's six years old. I happen to look and see it's a Honda Accord, maybe about a 2011, 2012 Honda Accord pulling up behind me. Now, when I pull into the her apartment building, I'm parked north-south, you know, so my car is north. And it's like three or four parking spaces. And then maybe going east and west, maybe about 15 or 20 feet to my right is more parking. It's more parking spaces and some to my left, you know, but it's only like three or four where I'm parked at and I'm facing north. And so a dude pulls up, a white dude pulls up in the car, man. He about, he's probably, I would say in his early thirties, clean cut looking dude, you know, I'm thinking he's an Uber driver or something. Like I said, this is about seven o'clock in the morning. So, <clears throat> so, um, all of a sudden he opens up his car door. You know, he opens up his car door and he stands between the door, you know, and the the inside of the car. He say, excuse me, man. He says, uh, I'm deputy. I'm deputy such and such with the sheriff's office, man. Uh, what's your name? And I look at him. Now, he ain't he ain't he's in. He's in plain clothes. He's in a you know, he's in a. He's in a he's in a uh, uh, what do they call it? He's in a. Uh, he just he's in a regular car, right? So this dude ain't flash no badge. He ain't got no, you know, no thing around his neck with no sheriff emblem or nothing of that, right? So I said, man, I said, F you, man, who you think you talking to, man? He asked me, you know, what was your name? I said, F you, man, who you think you talking to, man? You know, cause he ain't showed me no, no, uh he, he ain't showed me no identification or nothing, right? So I go, I still go to get in the car. Then he say, uh, he say, uh, hey man, what's your first name and, and, and what unit you're in? I said, man, who you think you're talking to, man? I said, you you ain't show me no identification. I said, I don't even live over here, man, you know. And then uh, so he starts heading back towards his car. He says, okay, I got some identification. And so uh, he said, I got some identification for you. So he gets in the car. He sits down in the car. Like I said, this dude is in plain clothes or whatever, right? And then he looks at me again. I said, move, man. I'm trying to take my granddaughter to school. Get out the way. So he pulls up a few inches in his car now and now. Cause first he was he was parked like uh, sideways. Now he almost like behind me a little bit, like he's trying to block me in. So I continue. I get in the car. I back out. It's an extremely tight squeeze for me to get out. At some point in time, I thought my mirror was gonna hit his. <clears throat> I thought my mirror was gonna hit his mirror. It's maybe about six, six, seven inches. So I finally, I back on out, you know. Now the whole time I'm doing this, 
he ain't saying nothing. I can just see he's on the phone or he's he's doing something right. Like I said, this dude ain't outside of verbally identifying himself. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't produced any type of ID, you know, identification saying who he is or whatever, right? So in my mind, I don't know who this dude is. Just because you say you such and such don't necessarily mean, mean that you're that person, right? So now as I leave, I'm coming out the driveway. Of course, he starts following me. So it's a school to the right, but not the school that my granddaughter goes to. So of course, in the morning at this time, it's always busy. So my plan, of course, is to let a few cars come and then hop right in front of one so he cannot follow me. And that's exactly what I do. But instead of a car, it's a bus. So, you know, I, I'm watching it as soon as, you know, it's getting close. I pull kind of right in front of it so he can't, he can't follow me. So he lets the bus go past. He gets like a car or two behind me. I drive down. It's a light. I stop at the light. I go through the light. Once the light turns green, you know, then bus are left heading to my granddaughter's school. This dude is still following. So my granddaughter said, uh, gee, dad, he's still, he's still, in, he's still behind me. Now keep in mind too, I normally don't use foul language in front of my grandchildren, right? Or kids, period. And so, you know, by her, so I'm assuming by her hearing me use foul language, you know, she knows something's going on, right? So now when we get to her school, which is maybe about three or four minutes from her house, she said, gee, dad, he's still behind us. So I said, okay, don't worry about it. So I get out the car. Um, I let her out. You know, I let her out. I walk her up to the little school thing. She had a little cup with some milk in it. So I take, I said, where are you going? You can't, you know, you can't take this with you. So she said, oh, I was going to pour it out. So I, he, I said, here, I'll, I'll pour it out for you. So I take the milk and I pour it out and I send her on to school, right? So like I say now, I'm doing all, I'm explaining all this because I'm not rushing. I'm taking my sweet little time or whatever. Now this weirdo, he's still behind me. You know, he hasn't said anything other, uh, other than what he said back at those apartments. But now you know, I see he's on the phone and I'm thinking to myself, man, if this dude really is the police, I hope they don't come up here and make no scene at the school, right? And so I get in my car, you know, I leave the park a lot all casually and stuff. He's still following me. Now I'm starting to doubt more and more that this dude is actually a sheriff, right? Because I know in the event, in my mind, I'm thinking if this dude really was a sheriff, all it takes is a quick phone call to have a bunch of sheriff. Uh, a, a bunch of other sheriffs behind me to pull me over, right? So now, of course, you know, in my mind and the lifestyle that I once led and the lifestyle that I once led, all this stuff is going into my mind now, you know, because uh, first and foremost, I have an extremely, uh, um, let's say I have an extremely active imagination, right? So I don't know what this dude is going on, got going on. And then also I know about my past and I have to keep in mind that, you know, while I call myself changing my life, uh, everybody has not made a change. And while there are some people who are glad that I'm home, everybody's not glad that I'm home, right? And so I don't know if this is some dude from a, 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 a weirdo that saw me on YouTube and, and, and disagrees with some of my stuff. I don't know what this dude is going on, right? And then another thing is running through my mind I don't know if you guys seen maybe about a year and a half ago in Queens, it was a dude dressed like a Hasidic Jew and he was parked on the side street. He had his car lifted up his, uh, the hood of his car, like he was having some car trouble, but actually it was a hit. So he was waiting for some dude who had recently got out of the federal penitentiary. Uh, he was living in a motel right up the street. So the dude's walking down the dude who lives in the motel, he goes to get in his car and the dude who was dressed like a Hasidic Jew, he runs up behind him, shoots the dude in the head a couple of times and kill him, right? And so, like I said, by me living the past life that I've led, all this type of stuff is going through my mind, you know. Um, I had a I had a partner, man, a pimp partner uh, in Montana. Now, after I left, his son came out there and was selling drugs. His son was in a motel selling drugs. So, you have some dudes come over there to rob him. So now, while he's in the motel, you have these white dudes posing as police officers. Um, they go to the front desk and say, hey, man, uh, this dude, whatever in, in whatever room this dude is in, you know, we're the police. We believe he's a drug dealer. Um, and we want to, uh, you know, we need the key to this guy's room. They, the uh, the motel, give the guy the key. You know, I don't know if they produce some, some fake identification or whatever, but they give these two dudes posing as officers the key those dudes go down there they get my my uh my partner's son 
go in there, handcuff him, take him away. Ended up killing him, right? Uh, eventually, they're caught. Uh, my 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 pimp partner man, he ends up suing the uh, motel for giving for giving him the key, and because of course they was not police, and he ends up getting millions of dollars. You know, he later on he or at that time I believe he was a pastor, and he's a pastor to this day. So I say that to say all these things is running through my mind, man. You know. Um, when I was out there ripping and running, you know, man, I used to be riding around with a mask sometimes when I was on the run looking for whoever I was looking for, right? And uh, I happened to pull up one time on my homeboy, Law Dog. He's still alive and well today, man. Maybe I'll have him come on here one day <clears throat> and talk about the story. So I'm on a mountain bike with a sawed-off gauge across the handlebars and a Halloween mask on my face. And so I pull up on him, right? I flag him down. I'm really trying to see. I'm looking for my cousin. Now, at the time, I'm on, I'm on the run. Bannon is an extremely small town, and so I don't really want too many people outside of my uh, trusted collective to even know that I'm in town, right? Because I'm living in Bannon, and like I say, at this point in time, I'm on the run for the three attempted murders that eventually got me a life sentence. And so uh, it's late at night. It's about 1 or 2 o'clock at night. Like I say, I got a Halloween mask on. So when I flagged the car down on the street by the name of Hathaway in our hood, it's dark. So I look up in there. I point. I got a sawed-off gauge. I point the gauge up in the uh in the car. I'm like, hey, what's up? Who up in there, man? Is uh, Ronnie Lewis up in there? That's my cousin, right? And so they like, no, man, what, what's going on? I said, where y'all seen Ronnie? And they like, no, man, what, what, you know, what's up? I said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for Ronnie. And so now I see these dudes is spooked. Like I say, it's, it's one or two in the morning. They didn't see me flash this sawed off gauge. So now that I realize it's the homies and I see how spooked they is, <clears throat> I really want to pull my mask off and say, hey, homie, it's me, man. But you know, because they scared. They do not want to pull off. I said, all right, homie, it's cool. All right, for sure then. So they steady making small talk. Hey, everything good? You straight? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good, homie. I'm straight. Okay, all, I, I'm like, all right, I'll see y'all. Oh, okay, uh, what, what, what you up to, homie? They, you know, they, they making all these questions, asking me questions because they are just scared to pull off. Because like I say, I didn't flash this gauge. They don't know what the hell I'm going to do, right? And so uh, eventually they end up driving off. So, but, but I say all that to say, you know, when you live in a lifestyle, man, and you really out there, you never know. What's going to happen? You never know. You know, you might do something in 1989, man, and it may be the nephew or the son of a person coming to get revenge in 2024. So by this police never uh, uh, identifying itself, I don't know who this dude is. All this stuff is going through my mind, right? So now I'm at the point where now I'm really ready to pull over and go out and run up on him like, hey, man, what's up? What you, what you, what you? What you want? What you following me for, right? But I also have a motto nowadays that treat everybody as if they armed, right? And so, like I said, the dude has already told me that he is a sheriff, <coughs> even though he's not produced any identification. So, you know, I'm, I'm driving slow at my regular speed. And, of course, you know, going through my mind, me being black, I'm thinking about all the black people that didn't got caught, you know, that didn't got shot by the police and all this type of stuff. So, of course, running up on this dude's car, would not be wise, right? So now, now it's been maybe about 10, 10 minutes from our initial encounter where he told me that he was a sheriff. And so now, like I said, I'm starting to think less and less that this dude is the sheriff because I already know one quick call should have a bunch of sheriff over here. And so now as I'm driving, I didn't came to another light. I didn't came through three or four stop signs. You know, he's right behind me. Um, so I didn't came through another light and I'm going up the street. Now I see a sheriff. It's a cross street and the sheriff is to my right. So I bust the left, right? And the sheriff hits a U-turn and throw his lights on. So I said, okay, yeah, now these is a sheriff. So now all of a sudden I look up, it's like five, six sheriff cars just pull up, you know, uh, SUVs actually. So they like, uh, you know, driver, throw your keys out the window. You know, I'm like, hey, man, F that, man. Why y'all pull me over? You know, because they still haven't told me anything. He's like, oh, well, we'll explain all that to you, man. Uh, We're going to need you to throw your, we're going to need you to throw your keys out the window. I'm like, man, F that. I'm going to need y'all to tell me what the hell is going on. And he said, man, listen, I promise I'll explain it to you, man. Once you, you know, you throw your keys out the window. So, you know, I'm being stubborn. I'm angry. So I throw the keys out the window, right? So then... He tells me, uh, you know, okay, driver, you know, step out, take two steps to my left. So, of course, what's instantly going through my mind is the last time this happened to me when I got arrested in Fontana. <coughs> so, you know, 
he tells me, uh, you know, now take a couple steps back, you know. So I walk back, you know, having me walk back slow. He tell me, put your hands on, put your hands on your head. I heard him, but I said, excuse me, well, I, I couldn't hear you. What you say? He said, put your hands, place your hands on top of your head. So I put my hands on top of my head. You know, they come up to me, handcuff me. You know, uh, they never, they, they handcuff me. And so then when they get that, then when they get me handcuffed, about four or five of them point, point guns at my car and run up to my car. I said, man, ain't nobody in the damn car, man. Well, you know, I'm, I'm mad. I'm cussing. I'm talking crazy. Right. So, uh, I say, hey, what's going on? So now, of course, it's about eight or nine sheriffs back there. One black dude. Of course, who do they, out of all these dudes, they send the black sheriff to talk to me. You know, the black sheriff was cool. A uh, young dude looked like he was probably in his mid to late twenties. So I say, hey, man, what the hell is going on, man? He's like, oh, I don't know, man. My my partner requested backup. I just came to back him up. So I'm like, man, uh, you don't know what's going on. All these damn guns y'all got pointed at me and stuff in my car. Y'all don't know what's going on. So he said, man, they know what's going on. He said, I just got a call. I just backed my partner up, right? <clears throat> so they got me on the car right there, man. Dude go to pat me down. I say, hey, man, listen, my wallet is right here. So, oh, yeah, so I forgot. Um. When the sheriff first pulled me over, he asked me something. I mean, when the sheriff per, per, when the sheriff first uh, uh, encountered and contacted me, he asked me something. Is your last name such and such? It started with a P. It was like a, it's like some type of, almost like a French sounding name, right? And so when they got me against the car again, they asked me again, man, is your last name such and such? I said, hell no, man. I said, my last, you know, I said, my name is, and I told him my name, right? So I said, man, my, uh, my ID is, is right there. And that's another reason why I always make sure to carry my wallet. You know, sometimes maybe I'm just running here or there and it might be a quick trip to the store. But me knowing my background, you know, knowing that if I do happen to have a, um unexpected encounter with the police, me my, me not having my uh, identification may, may, may make things even worse. And so dude looks at my name, right? And uh, so it's, it's nowhere even close to the name they're asking it. They're asking and inquiring about, right? So he goes back to, he tells the dude, well, no, this guy's name is such and such. Then they, they got a picture. They come up to me and they put the picture up to me. They got a picture. They never let me see the picture, but they put the picture up to me. And they look at me, they look at the picture. And he, the black dude said, oh, well, it does kind of look like him. <coughs> and uh, so they go back again. They over there talking some more. And now the cops are talking to me from the side. I'm, I'm like, hey, man, what's going on, man? Hey, listen, my right hand to God. I say, man, this... You know, this B right here, this this B right here, this, you know, hey, I'm talking, I'm talking buku, buku trash, right? I don't want to necessarily say what all I said because I want my video to get monetized, but I'm saying, listen, okay, I'm saying this penis sucking dude right here, man, this, this B, this old, you know, I'm, I'm talking crazy, man, this dude, he just ran up on me talking about he was a, uh, he's a, uh, he's a sheriff and they, and they asked me, well, what all did he say? I said, man, the dude told me he was a sheriff. He did not show me any type of outside of. Outside of saying he was a sheriff, this dude didn't show me any type of identification. Man, I'm with my granddaughter. I'm taking her to school. He got her all nervous. This dude is spot on me. I'm, I said, man, the dude is highly unprofessional. All types of stuff. I'm talking big crap, right? Now, even though they have seen my identification, my driver's license, they still got me in handcuffs. I'm still sitting there handcuffed. So, you know, they go, they open the, um, the driver's side of my door. Of the car door they go looking through the car they don't actually get in the car but they're looking all through there you know so they come back and ask me man uh who else drives this car i said man nobody else drives this car man what, what, what's going on you know uh so they go on to tell me that this dude right here you know i guess he he had an altercation or something with somebody last night i don't know i don't really know what the hell you know because i'm 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 so mad and talking so much stuff <coughs> i don't even really get uh what the hell they was doing. And they, and they probably wasn't going to reveal too much information to me anyway, right? So the black police that's talking to me, he apologizes. He says, hey, man, you know, we make, sometimes we do make mistakes and I apologize to you. Then another officer, he comes up to me. Uh, he says, hey, man, you know, I apologize. You know, we make mistakes. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, he said, I'm man enough to admit when we make mistakes. He said, man, we have talked to this officer right here. I said, yeah, because the dude was extremely unprofessional and blah, blah, blah. He said, uh, and we also will have a meeting with this dude at the sheriff's station, you know, to further discuss his behavior. And, and he asked me once again, what all did he say to you? I said, man, the dude didn't say nothing outside of he was a sheriff and asked me what you and I lived in. But he didn't show me any 
uh, identification or whatever, right? So, uh, you know, I said, hey, man, I didn't been to the pen, you know. I served a life sentence. So I don't I don't know who this dude was. I didn't know if this dude is, you know, somebody trying to get some payback from the, from the past. He could he could have been hired by somebody, you know. So, um, yeah, those are the... Those are some of the type of things I believe that, you know, all minorities have to face and encounter, man, when the situation could have, but the situation could have been resolved easier, first and foremost, had this dude produced some identification. Like I say, that's the word I was looking for. He's in an unmarked car, a plain car. He's in a Honda Accord. Uh, he has no, I didn't, I didn't see no gun on the side of him. He's in regular, he's in plain clothes. You know how sometimes they have those little badges hanging across their necks with the sheriff in them. He don't have none of that stuff. This dude is just, I was, all, like I say, he looking like an Uber driver, just a regular old dude, man. And so, you know, these are the type of things I believe sometimes that, you know, we encounter as minorities. I believe at some point in time, um, the dude would have, you know, showed his identification, to somebody had they not been black. Those are just those are just the way that I, you know, those are just the feelings that I have on that situation, right? And these are sometimes why people have hostile um feelings toward people in law enforcement, you know, because like I said, they handcuffed me. They ba basically they pretty much kidnapped me. You know, they took away my freedom for that period of time. They put me up against the car, you know, and just uh they traumatized my granddaughter, you know. Um and I'm pretty sure nothing's going to happen to this dude. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, man. But yeah, that that <coughs> uh, that happened to me earlier today. They had me in cuffs. I didn't know if I was going back to jail. And another reason people may ask, okay, well, you know, Chia, why was you out there talking stuff? Why, why, was it, why wasn't I more cordial? Because I'm seeing things either one or two ways, right? Either they finished to cut me loose because I ain't did nothing or... They put it up on me for something I had did a long time ago and I'm going back to jail. So being nice, you know, uh, didn't really make a, being nice didn't really have a bearing in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, at the point, at that time, I'm upset because how, how dude initially approached me, you know, basically just, hey man, I'm deputy such and such. But once again, no ID, no nothing. Like I'm supposed to just, just, you know, just, uh, uh. Go along and do everything this dude is saying just because he says he's a certain uh, individual. But anyway, y'all can see I'm still a little, I'm still a little shook up, still a little upset, man. But anyway, uh, yeah, they handcuffed me. I thought I was possibly going back to jail. Y'all already know who it is, though. It's your boy, 16 to life. Resume normal program.